Why do we have a rat in here? And why is this rat just hanging out with us? It's because it's a... <laughs> it's actually a remarkable Two little, little animal. These are just rats that many people will keep these as pets and they make wonderful pets. Uh, highly intelligent. Uh, the sad thing about them, they just have too short of a life cycle. But uh, they make great pets. And they also make really good snake food. And it is part of the food chain. But there are ways to do this where we can be dramatic. And there's one point, I keep reptiles because I love reptiles. I don't keep reptiles because I like to kill things. And I don't like killing rodents at all. If anything, I actually love rats. Love rats Did you to death. Rat yeah. mm -hmm. oh, gross. I love rats. And uh, because I love snakes, doesn't mean I don't love rats. I've kept lots of rats as pets. I have to breed rats. I have to feed rats to animals. And how I do it uh, is, is really, I guess, the only difference that I'm trying to basically put out there. But uh, I do it because out of necessity. And I do not keep and breed and feed rats to animals because I enjoy that process. I get nothing out of it. And if anything, it actually hurts me. Yeah, just look at him. He's trying to bond with his chipmunks in his backyard. He loves sending me photos and videos of this. And uh, so this video, we're going to talk about live feeding versus feeding frozen or pre-killed prey and uh, the benefits. And let's get rid of some of the uh, misconceptions and the ideas and why do we actually feed live when we do it. I'm going to show you a snake right here that only since it's a baby has it, has it ever fed on live. And these animals, this happens to be a Boland's python. So here's a Boland's python. This one's going to go into a shed. And uh, this animal, when you feed this animal food, it will often just I've take a, a pre-killed or defrosted rat. This animal will just open its mouth when you, when you offer a nice warm rodent. It's, it's crazy when you watch these guys eat. They don't coil around it. They don't do anything. And then some of the Bones pythons that I didn't raise on my own, they're more apt to lunge at you, strike. They're very excitable, getting a food opportunity. But when I take an animal like this and I've only fed it this subdued prey that's you know never alive, it basically brings the disposition of this animal down. And, and it's always shocking to people. It's like, wow, that thing is so gentle. Just opening its mouth. Friends? <laughs> well, she's, she's shedding and she, uh, let's see, you know what? Let's take this, let's try this. this. This animal's shedding, so I don't even, I don't necessarily expect that. But wonders never cease. So what she would do right here, if, if she were to want to eat, she would just start opening her mouth and like nothing. And so the chances of this animal ever, oh watch, keep watching. That's, well it's a Bolin's pythons. Bolin's pythons love to eat. But at the very least, we're having a very non-excitable moment. This, this animal's disposition, long tongue flicks, stuff like that. I can show you another animal that will readily eat this rat and uh, there's plenty of animals in here that are smelling these rodents and so we've activated their their uh, hunt instinct and the desire to feed but what i'm talking about is now when i engage this animal and i let other people play with this animal i really never worry about this animal ever doing anything and in fact some of these animals will not even want to eat, eat a live rat which is wonderful as long as it's eating something if the rat isn't alive that's that's better it's better for the animal it's better for me a couple reasons why it's better for the animal rats rats have teeth rats can defend themselves it could um well it, we could have cosmetic damage where the rat often when the snake grabs it and leaves the, the rat's face unsecured the rat's going to bite back naturally so it can actually bite the snake and you know pierce through its its you know skin and uh, can give it a an infection it could bite the snake in the mouth that's one thing i've seen you get these horrific uh mandibular infections uh of the mouth get these bites and basically when a rat bites a snake it takes all the bacteria in the snake's mouth and then it punctures through the gum and basically creates uh, a wound now you're basically inoculating that animal 
with that bacteria that's in the mouth and that animal only has to sit here and deal with uh, any of the bacteria from the rat which is generally gram positive, but a lot of the gram negative bacteria in the snake's mouth is not designed to go through a wound. So that could also you know, cause an infection. So basically it's something, if we're worried about the welfare, and we're all worried about the welfare and benefits to our animals, that's one thing. I don't want the rat fighting back and hurting the snake. So the rat could bite the snake. In some cases, you could leave a rat in with the snake and sometimes the rat attacks the snake because it's hungry, because you haven't given it water, you haven't given it food, or it's actually just fearful. But rats will defend themselves. They're incredibly uh, resilient, resourceful creatures. And one thing that's really interesting, so if I put a rodent in with the snake and the rodent were to bite the snake, sometimes that makes the snake crazy. Now the snake knows every time it smells the smell of a live rat, live mouse or whatever, that rat may be in the cage and it might come over and attack him. So the snake now knows that that rat attacked him, even though it was a different rat. So the snake now associates that live prey with something that could be fearful. And a lot of times these snakes will stop eating because of that. And some of those animals will never even eat live ever again and they only want to eat defrosted or they just won't eat for a long time or sometimes they won't eat ever again. So there's all these different things you want to consider. Rodent Pro, we get all sorts of frozen rodents, uh, perfect prey, but Rodent Pro is a massive supplier of frozen uh, rodents. They come to you where they're, these animals are, are grown in a manner where there's an incredibly good diet. They're uh, grown in you know, clean situations. Uh, they're frozen well, they're, uh, they often are vacuum packed. They come to you on, with dry ice. So they come to you like literally perfect, they're immaculate. These would be some um, pinky mice. And these are really, uh, they're, they're literally perfect. So you would take these and you could defrost these in water, but you can, you know, you can buy these from, uh, I'm just gonna sit here and say Rodent Pro and Perfect. Is that what we use? Yes, uh, Rodent Pro and Perfect Prey because not all rodent suppliers are, are the same. And I will tell you, I've had lots of bad experience, but uh, my experiences with Rodent Pro and Perfect Prey are absolutely perfect. And these guys really get hammered. They have a huge uh, stock, but they also have a huge supply demand. So sometimes if I can't get one from one, I'll go to the other. But those are the two that I toggle back between. And uh, I love all their stuff. And if you ever even had a problem, their, their customer service is excellent. So I'd recommend that. But always be careful because uh, when you're breeding rodents, you could feed them crappy, like dog food that's corn-based and it's not so great. Or you could feed it like a Purina RMH 3000 or something like that, which is a really... It's a, it's a high cost food, but it's gonna give you rodents that are, when I'm feeding those rodents to my snakes, they're really nutritionally complete and stuff like that. So right down to that, it really, it, it has an effect because you could get this crappy mouse or you get this really awesome mouse. And there is uh, something to consider about that if you really care about your animals. So once I freeze a rodent, another thing what I do, I cause uh, cellular destruction, which is basically when I freeze a rodent, you already start breaking down cell walls of the rodent just by freezing it. So when these animals are actually digesting this rodent, it makes digestion a little bit easier. So the animal might have a little bit better uh, chance of rendering as much of the nutrients from that as possible, but it's gonna basically just make the digestive process a little bit easier just by doing that. Uh, so when I'm taking, let's say I bought, so Rodent Pro sends me an order of rats. So there are these beautiful rats. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those rodents if depending two different ways to defrost them. I can put them in warm water, which basically accelerates the you know defrosting and basically, so we wanna turn it from being cold and frozen to uh, defrosted and warm. These are still not, I would use a larger vessel, but this is a frozen rat. So what you can do is you can put them in warm water. You don't wanna do scalding water because the scalding water will actually kind of cook it a little bit. Warm water. The key here, when we're feeding defrosted rodents, Two animals, you want to simulate the body temperature of the rat. You want to do something that basically triggers the animal into a feeding response. And generally that is the smell of the rodent, the, the warm feel of the rodent, and a little bit of wiggling. So we do that. Sometimes we, we use tongs like this. And when we're feeding large snakes, because it'd be, it's foolish for me to take a rodent that's defrosted and my hands warmer. This is so great. Take the rodent that's kind of cold, take my warm hand, offer it to a snake, the snake will shoot right past the rodent, grab my hand, and hands is what's for dinner. 
literally. And you have to use your brain, guys. We are humans, so we need to be smart here. We get this in the warm water. Well, I don't like to often feed a wet, dripping wet rodent to the snake. So what we'll do, we take it and put it, use a towel, we can dry them out. This one actually was defrosted, so it was a frozen rat, and then basically you can put it in a towel and leave it overnight, and then you come back, and then these guys are defrosted like that. Then we can heat these guys up. So you can, you can use a heating pad, you can do whatever, or even sometimes, you know, depending on what your animal is. Microwave? No. 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 Never microwave a rodent because they have, uh, their body cavity is basically a pouch, so it's like a plastic bag. So once you heat that up and the gases expand, you'll have explosion, you'll have guts everywhere in your microwave. It's you really not. Okay. I've talked to people that have done it and wow. it's pretty horrific. And you don't want to cook your rodent. Okay. So I can, I can do a quick uh, feed video. I can feed Snarfles and we'll see if Snarfles is going to be a gentleman or not. Uh, but before I do that, let me tell you a couple tricks. So you want the rodent dry. We would like it to be warm. This rodent right now is cooler than me, but I know Snarfles and his willingness because his entire life is to eat defrosted. So his parameters for what he considers food are very, very low. And that is because of you know captivity and how we've managed it, we've taught him to be that way. But sometimes when you have a picky animal, what you can do, you take some dirty rodent shavings. Oh, gross, Kevin. I don't care. Jeez. Whatever. Okay, so, so what's really good, you can take this rodent and you can bury this in there for a little bit. Shaking, baking, well, yeah, so you put it in there and you bury it and let it sit in a plastic bag. Uh -huh. You could let it defrost that way, you could do whatever. You could take rat shavings and put this rat in there. But you know what? So what happens if you got a snake that really likes mice? I take dirty mouse shavings, put it with the rat, and then basically get the smell of the mice onto the rat, heat this up, and then a lot of times that's enough to do it. And a couple things you want to do is when you're taking a food item like this, using tongs is good because now this is potentially, if I've warmed this up a bit, that's warmer than my tongs. And now I've basically created a, a point of focus for my snake. And uh, when you're offering it to a snake, one thing that, if you get a snake that's kind of picky, the, the nose, the very nose of the rodent, right against the tip of the snake's mouth, right between the lips, right where his tongue comes out. If you take that and gently rub back and forth, that's a good one. If you got a snake that is really a ready feeder, just a little bit of wiggling or sometimes no wiggling at all. So right now we'll just show you a snake that is very interested in eating. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna know where he is because I never wanna have a bad experience. And the bad experience is only due to my stupidity. Snarfles already knows it's food, okay? So if we watch, Snarf, we don't want him to come for your kid. So Snarfles, ooh. When do you let go? How do you know when it's a good time to let go of it? You just, once you feel like the, the snake is, okay, now what, what did we notice, guys? What did you notice, Donnie? So Snarfles knows you don't have to coil around it. The only thing he might try to do, if he feels threatened by your camera or by me or anything like that, just by activity, he would maybe pull the rodent back into his cage and kind of try to hide it. When your snake is eating, guess what it is? It's vulnerable. This, the busy part of that snake's mouth, the brain and the mouth are now focused on the food item. How is this guy gonna protect himself? So, a snake that didn't trust people would be wincing and trying to pull back and, and hide its rodent. Snarfles doesn't care because Snarfles knows that people won't steal his food. Snarfles knows that he doesn't get offered live food. So we're really bringing things down on um, everything. I, I think. This, this is about the best way we can, you know, present something and get this guy to eat and stuff like that. So what Snarfles will do to try to manipulate that rodent, he'll do this. And what he'll do is he'll try to push that rodent against something as he starts swallowing it because they don't have hands. So they have teeth that are recurved. And what they're going to do is they're going to adjust their mouth and articulate that whole feeding experience. So a lot of times that incorporates the animal's gonna do some coiling, but you notice he didn't coil to render the rat, you know, or to dispatch the rat. He actually is just doing this because this is all part of eating. I guess if I wanted views, because we have a secret channel here on YouTube. It's only a couple of you guys watching us. So no one knows about us. 
and uh, cause I'm not doing these live vi videos. I'm not doing, you know, getting attacked by snakes and stuff like that. I'm just trying to do things. I really want to be educational. The problem is education and not doing fantastic things doesn't get us viewership. It doesn't get us a lot, but maybe it gives us maybe a different quality of subscribers. So that means that you guys may really be here for maybe what I think are the right reasons. So if I did watch Monster Snake kill a rabbit, watch Monster Snake kill a pig, all those different things like that, I'm the guy watching on the other end and I love all the snakes and stuff, but I'm like, ah, oh, I don't really want to see it. I just, I don't need to see it. If I was going to try to defend why I want to see rats getting murdered and mice getting murdered and see a rabbit getting murdered and all these twisted reptile, uh, the reptile channel, Boom. I would argue, well, this is nature. This is, you know, you're, you know, this is a natural process and we're being educational. I don't see any education factor in there. I see nothing. All I see is a way for you to make us as a community look terrible. Make us look like we're heartless people. I keep reptiles because they're fascinating and all the different things as many of you do. I don't keep reptiles because I want to watch them kill and murder things. There are some people that do it, but to the average person that has no interest in snakes and if anything has a fear of snakes, they're going to sit here and think, we want to keep these animals because we want to watch them kill things. That's all the wrong reasons, but there, those are reasons that they're going to credit when they're trying to create laws and they're trying to do things against us. And I do not want to give them any ammo. It was a, maybe a little bit of a long winded video, but we are not, you know, into the sensational live feed videos. And I felt it was very important to kind of go over some of the, you know, reasons why we do this. So, uh, all right, well, give us, give us your comments. Let's hear what you guys have to say. There's another video coming on this and uh, continue just to uh, support us and, and tell us what you want to see. We are trying to get to a lot of videos and once again, always pour through our old videos. There is so much good content, even though it's not spiffed up like to Donnie's standards, we are trying to take some of that older video and then bring it back with uh, new lead-ins and stuff like that. And that, you know, Donnie's work is, uh, is monumental. Donnie's in front of a computer, he's looking at analytics. I never say dumb Donnie, but when dumb Donnie asks me the crazy questions, like, Donnie, look at that swallow in its nest box. And yeah. you won't even look because you don't care. <laughs> and, uh, make sure you argue with Kevin in the comments section about how live feeding, you think live feeding is better than uh, frozen feeding because we would love to have the discussion. Jack, and tell me how much you know more than me. You've yes. been, been keeping if reptiles you know for two Kevin, years. Leave a comment. If you know more than me, <laughs> go, go to it, guys. All right.